What's up, guys? So the R3 more specs were released, but we still don't have a full announcement yet. But what can we make about the sensor and the video features of the upcoming R3? Let's talk about it. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing because I like to talk about cameras and this type of stuff. And today we're talking about the R3. Now, the R3, if you don't know, is Canon's upcoming mirrorless camera that seems to sit in between the R5 and the 1DX Mark III. Now, the 1DX Mark III is basically Canon's flagship camera that's over $6,000, but it's a DSLR. So people have been waiting for the mirrorless version of that camera. It's not out yet. So when the R3 was announced, it's kind of like, is this this replacement of the 1DX Mark III? I thought it was going to be called R1. Well, if you don't know, it isn't the replacement of the 1DX Mark III. 1DX Mark III is still expected to, I guess, be considered the flagship camera. But this is kind of like a notch below it. And the R5 would be a notch below this. So this, the specs of this one should be impressive, or at least more impressive, when compared to the R5, which is an impressive camera I've got sitting right next to me. The one thing to keep in mind is that from a picture-taking standpoint, this is really going to emphasize taking photos. Now, the R5, when it was like being you know, specs were being leaked and everything, they were bragging about the 8K capability. Now that didn't turn out as they hoped it would because of the R5's unfortunate overheating problem. But R5 ended up to be an amazing photography camera regardless. So for photos, R5 is a, is a great catch. But this R3 is going to be a step above that. What we know from a picture taking perspective, it's going to take 30 frames per second raw photos. Now this particular spec is still up in question because we don't know what the resolution of the sensor will be yet, nor do we know if those 30 frames per second raw photos are compressed raw or are they full raw. Now, this matters because the card slots were also announced to be CF Express and SD cards. So it's a dual card slot system, but because they have the SD card slot slowing it down, you probably won't be able to hit 30 frames per second if you're doing the dual recording. You probably can only hit it if you're using the CF Express for raw photos exclusively. We don't know any of this information yet, nor do we know the resolution of the camera, which is important. They didn't announce it here. Of course, they're just, you know, give, feeding us little by little information. But the resolution is expected to be anywhere between 21 and 24 megapixels. Because you think, okay, they're saving the higher megapixel for the R1 whenever that comes out. And sticking to kind of like a near 1DX Mark III level resolution. Now the sensor is a stacked sensor. So this is Canon's first time using a stacked sensor. Now this will help when it comes to actually outputting the details faster. It, they're not putting a global shutter in, but at least you'll get better read speeds. Now it'll work with the electronic shutter for flash purposes. And the hot shoe is going to have actually connectivity. So you can connect different devices and we'll be able to communicate. So that's great too. But from a video perspective, which is what I'm really interested in, they stated that it will record 4K with Canon Log 3 and oversampled 4K. But when they said it'll record 4K, they said it'll record high quality 4K and oversampled 4K. So that's almost like, okay, HQ 4K then oversampled 4K. Now I may be reading into this, but to me, I read it as HQ 4K with Canon Log 3 and oversampled 4K. So I don't know if you know this, but the R5 has the ability to do oversampled 4K when you have it in crop mode and it doesn't overheat. Then you have the HQ 4K, which is full frame and it takes the entire sensor and then of course down samples it. And that is a full 8K down to 4K. So that they call HQ 4K. So this they're saying it has HQ 4K with Canon Log and oversampled 4K. So does that mean that we'll have two modes, a, an oversampled 4K and then a that doesn't overheat, then a higher resolution oversampled 4K or HQ 4K that possibly might overheat? And from that perspective, I would think that 
this sensor is probably not going to be 21 or 24, but potentially closer to 30 to 35 megapixels or even higher. We don't know, but I do not think it's going to be 21 to 24 based off of that one spec because they mentioned HQ 4K and oversampled 4K. Why are they not the same thing? Now, it doesn't list that it's going to do 8K at all. It just talks about 4K. That could potentially come out in a later post. Who knows? But right now, I'm, this is only speculation. I have no inside information, but I do believe that the sensor might be more than 24 megapixels. So that's all I've got to say for today when it comes to the R3 and the latest announcement. But let me know what you guys think. Does it seem feasible that they'll make it over 24 megapixels to something higher? I think that the hint is with that video flexibility that they announced with these latest spec release. Let me know what you guys think in the comments down below and stay tuned where we can talk about more R3 or you can check out the videos next to me if you wanna talk more camera stuff and look into that. But as always, you can make my day if you subscribe today. This is Magnus, and I'm out. See you guys later.